I want to welcome you to our service. Uh, a special welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. Our service today is going to be a little bit different from usual, from what we normally do on Sunday mornings here at Emmanuel Church. Uh, today, our service is going to be along the lines of uh, living in Newham and being good neighbors. Uh, some of you would know that Newham is marking Heritage Month this month of June. So we are hoping that uh, many people across Newham are going to be joining us. So part of what we are going to be thinking about is what does it mean to be a good neighbor? Because obviously, it's good for us to be good neighbors as we live across Newham. As part of the service, we're going to be hearing uh, stories, uh, what we call testimonies from different people, three people in fact. We're going to be having Bible readings and prayers. And a lot of it is going to be centered around making a life, making a home, living in Newham, and being good neighbors to each other. So uh, thank you for joining us, and um, I hope that you are blessed by the service this morning. Whenever we gather to worship God, one of the first things that we do is to ask God to make our hearts clean as we worship Him. So we're going to pray for God to clean our hearts. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Chichi is going to bring us our first Bible reading. The Bible reading is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to have a song, Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us. There is only one 
We're now going to hear a testimony from Juliet. Uh, Juliet Davis, uh, one of our members here at Emmanuel Church, has lived here in Newham all her life. We'll hear from her about her relationship with Emmanuel Church and what God has been doing in her life. My name's Juliet Davis and um, I'm a member of Emmanuel Church Congregation um, and I'm going to tell you about my testimony today. Um, it's a testimony of an example of God's persistent love and blessing within my life. And um, what I would say is that my earliest memory of God's love was actually through my grandmother. Um, she was a seven-day Adventist. She's very diligent, very faithful. She's the best example or, or a role model of, of somebody who is in your life and making sure that, you know, that, that, that we as her grandchildren were aware of God's presence. He was no longer a mythical um, being that, you know, you spoke about, but you didn't believe in. She actually brought God to life for us. And it was like an obligation that she had to make sure that, you know, he was there. So um, what I would say is that moving forward, when she passed away, it was, it was quite traumatic. But, you know, the, 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 the things that that stayed with me was a picture I had of her um, and it was on my mum and dad's wedding day and that was one of the rare um, times in which you could see her as a young person enjoying the wedding and looking very proud about the fact that her daughter had married you know a handsome young man um, so anyway I had this picture and you know it great, gave me great pleasure it gave me great joy to, to know that I had this picture of her and it was you know in 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 that kind of setting um, moving forward we, we had a house fire, we had a house fire and it was, it was very destructive, um, literally nothing left. You can, can you imagine having a house fire and standing on the, on the road and knowing that the clothes that you had on your back are the only possessions that you had. So what happened, miraculously enough at the time, or what we so thought, um, in the upstairs bedroom there was a trunk and this is the actual bedroom where the fire started, in that trunk the only thing that has survived in that whole room was the picture. The only thing. And, and to this day, you know, that it was a jaw dropping moment. There's no way, there's no other way you can describe it. How on earth can that happen? But it did. So could you imagine this has been a very um, um, shocking time, but a, a, a good time because, you know, I've, we've still got this picture. Now, moving forward, I decided, you know, or should I say, we decided to get married. So we decided to get married. So there was this journey that we had to take to try and get married. Now, anybody who's, you know, who has got married understands the, 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 the complexity of getting married, the preparations, making sure the invites are done, making sure everybody's happy. And, you know, during that time, we saw the good, the bad and the ugly. So it was quite traumatic in a way. Anyway, <laughs> it got to the point where we thought, oh, the money's too much. Oh, it's just getting too much. Why don't we just postpone it? We can't even find a church. Oh, it was just, it was just all over the place. It, it, it was just my, my, my madness at that time. That's how it was. But either way um because we was we was going on so much about the money we was at the lord's mayor show it was just one of these family days out um enjoying ourselves my daughter and her cousins they went off they were doing random things entered a competition and they won at that point we didn't even know what the competition was she just she just was just bored and they were just amusing themselves so that night she came home she said right mum um that's it you are getting married your venue sorted what do you mean what do you mean and she was saying it's sorted so we didn't understand because she she kept it a little bit of a secret but we got an email through on the monday morning saying that we'd run it won an event at stratford town hall to the value of three and three thousand pounds so can you imagine your 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 venue is completely sorted you know the food that's all sorted it was miraculous if anything um so that was sorted 
And I just kept thinking to myself, how, how is this possible? Things like that do, does not happen to, to people like us, but hey, it did. Um, and then when we were looking for the church, as I said before, it was a bit of a nightmare trying to find a church which we both mutually liked. Emmanuel Church was the last church. I was exasperated. I thought, oh, is, this, is, is he going to like this church? I don't know what's going to happen, but he did. He loved the church. And at that point, we decided to go with that church, miraculously so. Rang my mum, told her the good news. She said, oh, Emmanuel Church, did you know that that's where me and your father got married? I was like, oh my word. So you can imagine all these sequence of events coming together. They felt, they felt very orchestrated, orchestrated by God. So, you know, that, that did much to cement my faith in, in God. That did a lot to cement my faith. And the only thing that was niggling me was my inability to be a little bit more vocal about this, this, this new chapter that I'd come into in my life. And I, was, I felt I lacked that confidence. But one day I was shown by a young lady at a bus stop who was being, I would say, she was getting unwelcome attention from this young man. And all of a sudden I heard, oh, do you know who my father is? Do you know who my father is? And he kind of looked back, jumped. We all jumped. We're like, what's going on? Is he a celebrity? She said, my father is Jesus. He ran away, ran. We looked. <laughs> we were like, oh. <laughs> and I thought, wow, isn't that admirable? You know, I just thought I really admired her ability to do that. I thought I need to be just like that. So that is my story of, of how God has, has not left me. He is persistent. He keeps giving me that nudge and making sure that I'm going, to, going into that right path. I'm taking my journey in the right way. I'm living a more godly life and, I'm, and, and he's giving me the confidence to do that. Little by little, he's giving me signs. So that's my story. Thank you. We're not going to hear from Reverend Barnabas. Uh, Reverend Barnabas comes originally from Pakistan, but has lived here in Newham for many, many years, well over 20 years. We're also going to hear what God has been doing in Barnabas's life. I am Reverend Ken Barnabas Matlu. I have witness, I am witness, and I have my story to share with other people. My name tells my story. Nazir comes from Nazarite, a person, separated one or consecrated one. And then second name is Ahmed. Ahmed means the person who is praised in the family. And in friends. And then third name is Barnabas. It was given at my baptism, the son of encouragement. And Matlub is my surname, wanted one, wanted one to God, wanted one to family, friends, relatives, and this society. So I am well pleased by God, and I am thankful to Lord Jesus who saved me and given me everlasting life in Holy Spirit so that I can continue and bring people to him to be saved. I was consecrated by the womb of my mother. After three years, there was great celebration. And then I was sent in mosque for six years. And in the age of 12, I started a higher uh, study of Islam. And when I became 16, I started, you know, comparative study of the Holy Bible and Quran. After five years study, I found Jesus, the Holy Son of Holy God, as Lamb of God, because I was looking for not animals' blood or animal sacrifices, 
but higher sacrifice or good one. And God gave me this vision uh, through John's gospel. And he became Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He became my savior through his blood and I was saved by his blood, pure and holy one. I was appointed later on to share good news with other people, especially low caste people and nearly 200 people were baptized in three years. And I continued my ministry. I have a son for, you know, training. And I spent, you know, five, five years in seminary. And I got my master's degree in uh, Islamization. And then I came back and I started to ministry among, you know, Hindus and Sikhs and uh, Muslims are so uh, in, in, in Pakistan. So I was made director for evangelism and approximately 80 people from Hindu, Hinduism and Muslim uh, uh, Islamism and uh, you know, Sikhism were baptized in Pakistan. And here, when I came, I baptized 20 people from different religions. So God gave me a you know, wonderful opportunity because he was my salvation. He was my Lord. He was my God. And... Uh, he was, you know, uh, my sin bearer. I have no problem with anyone. Just I shared, you know, his goodness with people. So in that sense, you know, thank God for my witness. Thank God for opportunity. Thank God to, he made me priest, you know, and I served his people and he made me evangelist to share his good news with others. And he made me, a uh, true witness in thick and thin. This is the reason, you know, I have served my Lord whole life without any worry, without any fear, because Lord was with me and the Holy Spirit was guiding me and giving me, you know, uh, uh, the way which I have to go and what I have to say, because I suffered a lot of in Pakistan, because converts are not allowed, especially from Islam to Christianity. I served over there 20 years, and now I have served here 24 years. God is using me abundantly, and he is good. We're now going to hear a testimony from John, uh, John Harrison. Uh, John is an American who joined us here at Emmanuel Church last year, and somebody who has become a Christian uh, in his life. So John has come to live in Newham, and also God has been acting in John's life. So let's hear a bit of John's life story and what God has been doing in his life. Hello, my name is John Harrison and I am a Christian. I grew up in the United States and Canada to parents that were atheist and agnostic. Neither being all that interested in religion or faith, I was given a bit of this feeling that there had to be something more from my mom though we could never really as a family narrow down what that must be. So I always had a dream and a desire to find a more spiritual connection to things. I was interested in fantasy and had a big imagination as a child, and I just needed to find out what it had to be. There had to be more. There had to be something else. As I got older, I started looking into different religions, faiths, and belief structures. I looked into Christianity and passing when I was in my early teens, but at that point, I just said to myself, that can't possibly be it. That's just too easy. There are so many Christians around. So I looked into other things, into Buddhism, Taoism, Wicca, and Druidic practices that had once been common in England. Ancient days, obviously, not any time recently. But I even looked into things like the Nordic mythologies and tried to find some sort of semblance and understanding. But there wasn't anything there. Nothing gripped me. Nothing actually made me feel connected and whole. It wasn't until 2005, on February the 15th, that I came to accept the understanding that there is only one God, and that is through Jesus Christ. This happened at about 2.30 in the morning. I had woken up from a dream. Now, the dream I had was really strange for me, 
because it was just faces. It was like going around on a merry-go-round over and over again, and just seeing face after face after face of people I knew, people I met, people I respected and loved. And aside from having me knowing them, the only other thing that connected them when I realized who they all were was that they were Christians. Whether they were Christians their whole lives or not, I don't know and can't speak to, but they were all people I loved and respected for who they were, for their intelligence, for their love, for their kindness. So at 2.30 in the morning, I woke up, I looked at the ceiling in my bedroom and said, okay, God, I get it. I've been looking for something that's been there the whole time. Rolled out of bed quietly so as to not wake up my parents and prayed for the first time. That began a very interesting walk for me, and a very long one, since I started in Vancouver, British Columbian, I knew him now. That walk led me to have a deeper relationship with my friends than, that I had had throughout school, and the co-workers I had at the time as well. It wasn't until after I became a Christian that I found out, when telling my colleagues and my friends that I had given my heart to Christ, that they had all been praying for me. People I knew just through work had been in prayer groups and prayer circles, praying for me and hoping that I would come to know Jesus and that I would be able to have that kind of healing that only he can provide. And that was awe-inspiring and daunting for me because I had no idea, no clue that these people had cared enough to be praying for me. Now, I try to make sure that I live my life more like the way Jesus calls us to, showing love and compassion. Prior to coming to Christ, I was not how the book of 1 Corinthians describes love. I was actually kind of quick to anger. I was always looking to debate and fight and just tilt at windmills like Don Quixote. I just had to. It's just what I felt like I always had to do. I had to fight people. I had to fight for everything. I wasn't doing, and since then, I haven't. I learned it's better to show love, compassion, accept people how they are, and bring them to Jesus and just show them love. Part of my walk is just listening to and following where Jesus is leading me. Most recently, that's been to here, to Newham. I came to Newham in 2019 in March, and that was after a few years of prayer between me and my wife and listening to and waiting on God, because we'd felt him telling us that we should be moving to England that we should be moving to London. We felt that when we were first married in 2011 and had that continue on ever since. Well, at the end of 2018, we felt the Lord telling us the time was now. We prepared ourselves, we closed down our lives, looked for new jobs and work here in the UK, here in London, and without having 100% of everything secured, I got on a plane in Vancouver, and then the next day I was here. In Newham. I spent the next few weeks living in a and b just looking for where the Lord was leading me. And in that time, he found me a job, a place to live, bank account, and everything else I would need to sponsor my Canadian wife to join me here. So that's me. My name's John Harrison. I'm a Christian, and Newham is my home. We're going to hear another Bible story. This is a very familiar story, the story of the Good Samaritan, which our brother John is going to read to us. Our reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 30 to 37. Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest who was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he puts, on his own, on, he puts on him on his own animal, 
brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back, I'll repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can I start by saying how pleased I am that um, um, Newham is doing this whole thing about uh, making a home in Newham and that uh, I'm hoping that uh, many people across Newham have joined us uh, in this service. I just want to say uh, a prayer before I share some thoughts. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the stories that we have had today and we pray, Lord, that you will help us now to draw out your message uh, from these stories and from the Bible readings that we had today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, many of you would know Jesus' words about loving one's neighbor, the story that we call the Good Samaritan. That idea of loving our neighbor is something which we hear time and time again. In fact, a number of television programs have been based on the idea of loving our neighbor. Many of you would know the Australian program, Neighbors, you know, uh, which um, you know, is very popular. And it's all about how people should love their neighbor. And many years ago, there was this program called Love Thy Neighbor. Those of you who are uh, older will remember that program about people living side by side and um, the kind of issues they have between them uh, and so on. And it's all based on Jesus' message of love thy neighbor, which is captured in the Good Samaritan. Now, the thing about the story of the Good Samaritan is that there are other aspects of that story that we don't talk about a lot. So let me just say what Jesus said. Jesus said there was a man who uh, had been attacked and he was lying on the side of the road and a priest came by and didn't care for this man. And a, what they call a Levite came by. A Levite are people who work really hard to look after the church and look after the temples in those days. But he didn't care for the man either. And a Samaritan, a total stranger, who doesn't even come from that area, came around and helped the man. And what Jesus was trying to draw out here is that it is not how holy we are that God looks at. And it is not how hardworking we are that God looks at, but how helpful we are. The priest is a holy man, but see, how, see what he did, didn't care. The Levite was a hardworking man, but again, didn't care. But the stranger was really helpful. And Jesus was using that to encourage us as we live in any place. We may be strangers, we may not know each other, but we should always be ready to help. Now, there are other things that Jesus said, but I'll just share one of them with you. One thing Jesus said was, there was a time that people gathered around him, and he looked at them, and he saw that they were carrying many burdens. He saw that there were many things that were bothering them. And Jesus said this, Jesus said, come to me, all of you, with all the loads that you are carrying, and I will give you rest. And he said, my burden is light. And I just think that if we think about that, if we are able to come to Jesus, he will give us a different kind of burden. He wouldn't give us the burden of you know, worrying too much about everything or you know, being bitter about things that have happened in the past or things that people have done to us that we, ha we are struggling to forgive, all the terrible things that we carry as burdens. Jesus will take this away from us. And you know, the burden that he's going to give to us is actually the burden of caring for our neighbors. Things like that. The burden of being generous to other people. The burden of being kind. The burden of forgiving when people do things to us. So as you hear this message, 
I hope that it touches you in some way. I hope that Jesus' message of loving our neighbor, the people around us, being helpful to them, would have touched you today. And if there are particular burdens that you are carrying, I hope that you will put them down and come to Jesus so that he will give you a different kind of burden, the burden of loving your neighbor, the burden of forgiving, and of being generous to those around you. Amen. intercession. Uh, intercession is the time when we pray for other people, people other than ourselves. So our sister, Evangelist Christine, is going to be doing our intercessions today. Prayer intercession for Sunday heritage. Dear God, we pray for ourselves, the Church of God, people of all faiths and different faiths our neighbors, the government, and people across the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this Sunday, for remembering our heritage as Christians living in a multi-diverse community in London, United Kingdom. Lord, we connect as people of God we are rooted in a tradition of God's love, seeking to warm, inspire, and ignite human's heart, individually and as a community, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in us godly, outreaching, and caring friends. God reawaken this mission in and through us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are one in one service, one in witness, one in compassion, one in doing and speaking up for justice, one even now in prayer, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O oh Lord God, we are one with all people, kept in poverty or slavery, with all who are in fear and are from abusers, terrorists and oppressors, with all who face addiction of any kind. 
and with all who are targeted for unjust treatment because of who they are. And we are in for all, especially during this pandemic period. We are in for all throughout the globe on the effect of COVID-19 on human race. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are rooted in a tradition of rekindling faith among those whose relationship with God has gone cold. God, please meet us where our paths are astray. And as we seek our own way alone, forgive our sins and failings, transform our weakness into strength for the purpose of your glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are one in prayer for leaders in religious department, political department, economic and social life, that there may be just justice and peace among all peoples for all who work in to sustain our lives as teachers, healthcare workers, civil servants, builders and maintenance of road, drivers who drives our transportation, homes and sources of power, and for all who protect our lives as military and then police and as first aiders. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are one with families, friends and neighbors, near and far. Families like us, families different from us, and families with all who need your healing power. And family who are the edge of breaking down. And families with children with difficulties. And families in care. And with those in hospice and care homes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, into your care, O oh God, we place ourselves and all our prayers, trusting in your promise of new life in Jesus Christ. Forgive our sins and hear our prayers that we bring to you. Fulfill our requests and desires, not as we ask in ignorance nor as we think we deserve, but as you know us and as you love us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm now going to say a couple of prayers for us. The first one is a prayer about our sins and the forgiveness that God gives to us. If you feel touched by today's service, then join me in saying this prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Now I'm going to say for us the absolution, which is God proclaiming that he's taking away our sins. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So again, thank you for worshipping with us today. But you know what? I have just one more prayer to say, and this is the prayer to bless you. My brothers and sisters, may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <music>